Hey everybody, my name is Izzy Swan, welcome to Think Woodworks, and today we're headed out to get some lumber. So this probably isn't what you were thinking, but behind me, they're clearing this whole area out and they've fallen a few trees back here that they're just going to burn. So I'm going to pick the, I'm going to pick up those trees and I'm going to show you today how you can use your table saw and a simple jig to mill raw logs up into usable lumber. Okay, so this is the jig I was talking about. It's a really simple build and today I'm going to show you how to build this jig and how to use it to take logs and mill them into lumber. All right, today's going to be a fun project and I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I have a lot of subscribers who are from overseas, so not only am I going to give measurements today in Imperial or English measurements, but I'm also going to do a um, metric system. So, um, and I'll try to keep it as quick as I can. The, I'm using CDX for this build. It's an inexpensive plywood and it works great. It's a 3 quarter or 32 millimeter. Um, my other jig is 26 inches or 660 millimeters long and I want my I want this new one to be longer to accommodate larger material so I'm gonna make it 36 inches long or 914 millimeters or so so I'm gonna cut the length to start with and then we'll cut out the components we need so I'm making this jig six inches tall that way I know that I can accommodate this, my, my blade size on my table saw. So to start with, I want to minus an inch and a half, roughly an inch and a half off of that height and cut one strip of plywood for the back of the jig. So I want to cut it at 100 and, uh, 117 millimeters or 4 and 5 eighths. Okay, I've marked out 4 and 5, or 4 and an eighth or uh, 105, 105 millimeters, and I'm going to set my saw. I set my saw blade at a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to set that saw blade so when I cut it, it's going to cut down that line. So um, 105 or uh, millimeters or four and one eighth inches. Are, that's your long point on your 45 degree cut. Okay. Now what I need to do is, I'm going to leave my saw on the 45 degree angle and I need to cut two pieces that are an inch and a quarter or 32 millimeters to the long point. Okay, now that I've got that done, I need two more pieces. Um, well, I need more than two more pieces. <laughs> but I need to cut two pieces that are 6 inches by 6 inches or 152 millimeter by 152 millimeter square. I need to make my slide now. This is the piece that's going to make this whole thing adjustable. And I need to uh, cut a piece that's beveled on both sides. And then from long point to long point, it needs to be three and a half inches or 89 millimeters. Okay, with my slide cut, the bevel uh, cut on both sides, I need to cut this to seven inches or 180 millimeters long. And I should have been wearing my safety glasses the whole time. Okay, to start the assembly, I've taken one of the uh, smaller pieces with the angle on it, and I've pre-drilled some holes. I pre-drilled some holes in them, um, but the holes are drilled so when they come through, they'll come through this piece right here and not into that miter cut. And I'm just going to dab a little hot glue on here to hold this thing in place while I screw it on. Okay, now with this track in place, I'm going to use our take our mitered piece, the slide. This is the piece that'll move back and forth, and I'm going to put this in here. But I'm going to throw a little paper shim in here, so that gives this a little space. And I'll just screw this down, and I'll work my slide down as I'm screwing it down, and that'll hold everything in position. All right, so when I installed the slide, there is a little bit, a little tiny bit of a lip right here. So I just set my saw blade back up to 112, or uh, excuse me, four and five eighths or 112 millimeters, and I'm going to run that down just to clean that up, make sure I have a nice square edge. The next step is to take the bigger pieces with the with the miter cut on them like this, and these are going to act as the top and bottom of our jig. 
Now I've pre-drilled some holes roughly 3 eighths of an inch in on the plywood or you know 10 millimeters. That way when I run my screws in to hold this in place it doesn't interfere with this miter slide right here. And again just a little bit of hot glue, they'll tack this thing right in place. And then just flip it over and do the other side the same way. Next I've taken my slide and I've installed it in one end. And I took one of our square blocks. I'm going to take one of the square blocks, make sure it's on a flat surface, flush with the bottom and flush with the sides. And then I'm just going to trace that, that out. And then I'm going to take and cut this section off. And I'll use my bandsaw to do that. Okay, with my piece cut out, I'm just going to slide it in the end here and make sure everything fits right. And then I'm also going to mark on my the slide that goes down the track here where it hits this piece at that, um, at that joint. Alright, with my one end piece shaped, what I want to do now is cut out a rabbit that will receive this little piece of aluminum here because I'm going to be running screws in and out of this to hold logs and stuff in. Um, I want to put a plate here so those screws don't eventually eat, eat all this up and work their way through the wood. Alright, it's a party now. <laughs> Off camera while I was waiting for the battery to charge on my camera, I installed this one end cap here on the end and just flush with the outside. And then I finished screwing together um, the, our little slide. I'm just going to shove that in the end here. I also... Thanks, it. I also cut an oak log down that we that I picked up this morning while we were out in the woods and I want to go ahead and cut this up into lumber. I've adjusted it to the depth of this log that I picked up this morning while we were out in the woods. This is a piece of oak I want to mill down. So now all I'm going to do is I've set my slide to the length I want. I'm just going to use a screw to fasten it in position so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to set my, my log in here. And I'm going to start by just taking all three quarter of an inch or 18 millimeter off one end. All right, with my log locked in place and screwed in, I set the depth of my fence to six inches or 153 millimeters. And I'm just going to run through in consecutive passes, flipping the jig over each time to work into that log. I want to mill this log down to one inch thick stock for some knobs on my next project. So I've made these little spacers that will fit right in here on both sides and I'll set my flat side of that log against there and that'll make my, uh, that'll give me a one inch thickness when I cut it out. So I'm just going to put a screw in each one of these to tack these in place and throw the log back in. Well, thank you for joining me today, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this build. Um, it's a pretty simple build, you know, and for my trouble, I got a couple beautiful pieces of one-inch sculpted. And, you know, don't be afraid to go out and find material and make stuff like this. If you guys like this build and you build a jig like this, you know, send me a picture of it. I'd love to see it. If you check out my Facebook page, and I'll put a, a description, a link in the description below, 
Um, send me a picture. I'd love to see it. I might even post it on one of my videos along with your name. So, uh, you know, thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you want to see more about how this jig's work, jig works, I'll also put that um, link in the description box below where you can see it in action a little bit more. And uh, y'all have a great day.